Uh, but I want to turn your attention, amen, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10 in the ESV. Praise God. I'm excited today because I want to preach on a subject that we all need to hear. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I need the Word of God. We all need it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. For we are God's fellow workers. How many of you knew that? Amen. Amen. We work together with God. You are God's field and God's building according to the grace of God given to me like a skilled master builder. I laid a foundation and someone else building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. Amen. Amen. Brother Randall Morrison uh, and his family, they're in the building business. Brother Randy Hobbs has owned a construction business. They know how to lay a foundation and they know how to build on top of that foundation. I'm glad today that this church is not built upon sand, but it's built upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ, and he is our foundation. Hallelujah. I'm so glad today that I am aided and I am blessed by the grace of God. Uh, A lot is said about the grace of God. We were all saved by grace, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Amen. How many of you know you weren't saved by what you did or how much money you put in the plate? You weren't saved by how righteous you were or how holy you look. You were saved by grace. Hallelujah. No wonder they call it amazing because none of us deserved it. Our life did not merit it and nothing we did could have deserved it. But God sent His one and only Son and by grace we can receive what Jesus did on Calvary, and the blood of Christ covers my sins, and my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, all because of amazing grace. Some might ask, what is grace? Grace is supernatural favor on your life. I was so glad uh, to hear the news that Randall and Jessica have started their own business And immediately God began to bless that business. Not because they had high priced advertising or because of anything else. But God's favor is on their business. God's favor is on your home. God's favor is on your marriage. God's favor. Somebody say amen. God's favor is on each and every one of our lives. And when God's favor is on my life, there's nobody's favor. Like God's favor. I don't know the president. I don't. I barely know the mayor of Elwood. But it's something when somebody who has power and authority has put placed their favor on your life. I don't know many rich people, and I don't know many people that are powerful. But I serve a God who is all powerful, and He has put His favor, His stamp of approval, on my life. Hallelujah. And we call that grace. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 through 9, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Hallelujah. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Somebody said, well, I'm just a Christian, and I hope I get a little cabin somewhere in the corner of heaven. No, you can't think like that. You've got to think about the fact that that we sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus by the grace of God. Grace is an amazing thing that has been poured out on us. Listen to verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. I'm not a poor, barely making it Christian. No, I've got the richness of God's grace 
upon my life every day when I wake up. God's grace is right there. It's a blank check I have called God's favor, God's blessing, God's authority, God's power. It's on my life, and I'm grateful today for the grace of God that is upon my life. And then Paul says again, for by grace, God's undeserved, unmerited favor, for by grace are you saved through faith. You put your faith in the finished work of Calvary, the blood that was shed, and because of that, God's favor is all over your life. When you leave this place today, God's favor goes with you. When you pull into Walmart and you want a parking spot that's close, just remember God's favor is on you. Watch one open up. Oh, pastor, you're saying silly things. No, I'm not. God's favor and grace is upon my life. Hallelujah. You're saved by grace through faith and, th and that not of yourselves. Some people get the idea that, well, it's because I come to church and it's because I read the Bible and it's because I don't go here and I don't do that. No, it has nothing to do with that because none of you could be good enough to deserve Jesus dying on a cross and shedding his blood for you. It's the gift of God, the scripture says. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Not one of you can boast about your being religious. The only thing you can boast in is the grace of God. The grace of God. God's undeserved favor is what saved all who are truly born again. You didn't earn it. You didn't pay for it. You didn't deserve it. It was simply God chose you. Somebody say, God chose me. You don't realize what you're saying there. God, out of all the millions of people, listen, I do funeral after funeral of people who have went on and God did not choose them. But God chose you. Amen. Out of all the millions of people on this planet, God chose you. And He called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. And He did it all because He's just a good God. He's a gracious God. He's a giving God. He's loving God. Hallelujah. And I want to preach today. I, I got ahead of myself and didn't give you a title. But the title of this is Don't Waste Your Grace. Don't Waste Your Grace. Amen. Because the Apostle Paul said, because I've received so much grace in my life, because I've been so blessed, there have been many times when I didn't deserve to be forgiven, but God did it anyway. Some of you should be dead and in your grave from a drug overdose, from an abusive relationship. You should be dead and in your grave, but God's grace has kept you. God's grace kept you when you didn't deserve to be kept, when you turned and walked away from the church and turned and walked away from God but somehow God's grace was strong enough to Nicole Jackson to say, I still love you. I'm going to bring you back into the fold. God's grace is amazing. And the Apostle Paul thought that the foundation of the kingdom of God is the finished work of Christ on Calvary for our salvation. But that foundation that can never be changed is what we build on. We build on the foundation of God's grace with our living, with our life, with our talents, with our skills that God has uniquely given to us. Amen. Paul taught that the foundation can't be changed, but what you build on that foundation is your choice and your investment in the kingdom. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about money because God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's not concerned with how much you give into the church, but what he is concerned is what you do with those skills that God gave you that are uniquely yours. What are you building upon the foundation of Christ? Are you wasting the grace of God, the favor that has been placed on your life, or are you using your life to build the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. 
Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 through 14. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You can't change how people get saved, no matter how much you want to. I can't get up in here and preach a message about salvation that is, that is minus Jesus. I can't preach about Allah and Buddha and every other way that people say they get to heaven. No, I can't change the foundation. But I can build on the foundation. Amen. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work, each one of you, you have a work to do. Each one of you, God has gifted you and blessed you and caused you to have you know some people are so smart that I have to get a dictionary out to understand what they're saying but that's what God has gifted them with I mean Lord if I could cook like Linda and Mary and if I could cook like that I'd probably be a chef in some restaurant but I can't cook like that <laughs> amen everybody has different skills. Sister Vicky is a former nurse, and and uh, David is a former respiratory therapist, and and uh, Sister Teresa is an LPN working in nursing homes. We've all got something to build with. We've all got a voice. We've all got a heart. We've all got something that we can build on that foundation with. And the Bible says each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Oh, pastor, now you're making me nervous because you put me on the spot. Listen, the Lord is coming back for a church, a bride, who has made themselves ready. That's you and I. The Lord is coming back for a church who is active in this present world, trying to win souls to Christ and trying to be a light in a dark world. Listen, this world is getting crazier by the minute. All you've got to do is watch a little bit of the news and it'll be discouraging if you're not careful. But remember, the grace of God, the favor of God is on your life. And when you open your mouth and share your testimony or you do something kind for a person, God's favor is upon that. When you do something good for the church so that people can come to a place and find salvation, God is watching what you're doing. Amen. The Bible says if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. Now we talk a lot about rewards in heaven as though they're just automatically given. But the truth is you will be rewarded for what you have built on the foundation Christ has laid. Amen. So I'm saying today, don't waste God's favor on your life. Become active in your church. Become active in the world in which you live and you move. I don't work at, at the hospital like AJ and Nathan do. I don't have a voice there, but they do. I don't have an environment like your family. But I want to tell you, God's favor is upon you. And don't waste the grace of God that He's put on your life. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody there's hope in a dark, dying world. Tell somebody that they don't have to stay in the shape they're in. That God can transform their life. I want to tell you today, your voice is important in this world called 2021. Amen. Your voice, your writing. David uh, Henderson, new to our church, the other day we had lunch and he handed me a book that he had written. Many of you don't know he's got writing skills. And, and many of you in this place, you think, well, what can I do? What can I share? Where's my corner that I have a niche on? Listen, if God saved you, and he saved you for a purpose. 
God saved you for a reason. Hallelujah. Your appreciation for God's supernatural favor will show up in what you choose to invest in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It talked about different materials. Brother Randy knows, brother, we got two Randys now, so I've got to be careful which one I talk about. They're both in the building trades. It's vitally important what you put into a building, whether it's going to last or it's going to fall apart. Vitally important what you invest. And the apostle told the church, he said, some will invest gold into the kingdom of God. Gold. I don't have any gold. I can't afford gold. But gold is more than what you shell out in cash in the offering plate. Gold is that part of your heart that is precious. You put what's precious in your heart and your spirit into the kingdom of God. Everywhere you go, you're finding somebody to lead to Jesus. You're finding somebody to tell that there's hope in a lost and dying world. You give from your heart that place that is precious. Amen. Gold is costly. It's rare. It won't rust. Gold is purified by fire and gold symbolizes the value of that worshiper in all of us, what we place our worship on our God. I was so glad to see today that some of you came in and as the music began to play, I saw you building up the kingdom with the gold that was in your heart. That pure worship, that, that from the heart worship, that's rare, but it's there. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that in the tabernacle, the people brought the gold as an act of worship and showed the value they placed on God. Listen, what are you giving to the kingdom? What are you building in the kingdom? Are you giving God the scraps of your life? Or I'll give you some time, God. If I have time, I'll give you some time. No, give God the best you've got. Give the kingdom of God the best you've got. Well, what difference will it make? Listen, you don't know the example that your life is showing to others, how it might be changing their world. There are people here today who are saved because of the example of somebody else. Amen. Are you bringing costly worship to God? Are you investing in the kingdom of God the best you have the best of your time, the best of your talent, the most indulgent of your worship. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've made up my mind, God, I'm going to give you the best I've got. I'm going to worship you with all of my heart, not just if I feel like it, not just if I hope I feel goosebumps. Listen, worship is not about a feeling. It's about a giving. A giving of something is precious to you. Amen. And then Paul said, some people are building in the kingdom with silver. And silver symbolizes wisdom many times in the scripture. Are you reinvesting in the kingdom the wisdom that God has given you? What can I do with my wisdom? There are many teenagers and children that need Good, godly mentors. They need good, godly... How many people do you know that are being raised by a single parent? Many children come into our doors. Many young ladies, sometimes young men will come and they're single parents. You know what? When you pour into that child's life and, and you share your wisdom with that child and your love and you hug that child and you show them what it's like to be a great Christian. Listen, people learn to love you before they learn to love your God. And if they see somebody who's half here and barely making it and always worried, always fretting, no faith, listen, you're building with hay and straw. But I need some people in the kingdom of God to say, I'm going to show these young people a real worshiper. I'm going to show these young people what it's like to be a person full of faith. I'm going to show those that are coming up what it's like to really 
build in the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. amen. And then some build with precious stones. Pearls are mentioned in the Bible in several places and even in heaven. Anybody ever heard of the pearly gates? Pearls are fish for. And they're the byproduct of an oyster's pain. You say, I've got a lot of pain in my life and I've got a story that it's a little out there. When you take your story of failure, you take your story of a wild life that you used to live, when you take and you dig that up from the depths of your soul and then you share it with somebody, you don't know how much good you're doing for the kingdom of heaven. Some people don't know the cost, Sister Teresa, that you've had to pay to serve the Lord. They don't know where you've come from. They don't know that many years ago you got so discouraged, you backslid and lived a crazy life, but you're here today. And somebody that may have walked away from God, and they come back and they say, Lord, I'll give you one more service. There's a Teresa Collins who will break open the oyster and give them the pearl and say, listen, you can do it. You can make it. You can be saved. God still loves you. God still cares. Are you using what you've been through, the pain that brought you to gain, to testify to others in pain? Are you fishing for souls who are in pain? Amen. Don't use your pain as a reason to complain. I see so many in the church sometimes, they go through hard times, and, and they use that as, as a means to get attention. Oh, life is so miserable. I just don't know if I'm going to make it. Somebody please feel sorry for me. God is not taking you through hard times so you can get a bunch of attention for yourself. God is taking you through hard times so you can lift your hand and say, I'm going to serve God any way. Amen. Amen. The church is only as strong as what its people bring to build on the foundation. You know why we have a church like Life Church in Elwood? Because you come, you sacrifice, you give, you pour your heart into this thing called church. Amen. God designed the church to build upon the foundation that Jesus left for us. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't ever let the devil... Convince you that you're a nothing and a nobody. No, you're a child of God saved by God's favor on your life. Amen. You're a living witness to every person that walks the streets of Elwood that feels like they're so drug addicted they can never get back to God. But you're a living witness that even though you messed up, God will clean you up. You're a living witness and you're building in the kingdom of God with your testimony, with your time, and with your service. Hallelujah. The church is made up of enduring, committed, strong families that are fastened together, locking arms with one another, and building an ark to endure the storm. My wife and I just recently went to the ark encounter, and I walked away from that beautiful uh, display there, realizing like never before, the church is the only ark that people can get on to be saved from the judgment that's getting ready to come. Amen. It's a shame that we show pictures of cutesy little arcs and little colorful animals getting on the ark, and we think of the ark as just a, a nice little story. But you know what the ark was? The ark was God's only way to avoid judgment. Right. And the church... You and I, we are the church. We're building an ark of safety for every person in Elwood, Tipton, and Alexandria and the surrounding communities where they can come and get in the church that we are building to be saved from the judgment that's to come. Because you, if you've read, read your Bible and you know anything about the judgment that's coming, and trust me, it will come. The only hope for this world is the church. Some people now have kind of given up on the church. Well, I can be saved at home. I can sit and watch TV preachers. I can, 
I can do as I please and the church is really not important. Let me tell you something that's a lie from the devil. The church is God's ark of safety and the church is you and I. And when we come together and we gather together and worship and build one another up and strengthen one another, that's the only thing that's going to get people saved. That's the only thing that's going to keep people from being lost. The church. Are you fastened to the church? You know, Paul said, we're building on this foundation. Well, when you're building something, there's a lot of nails. There's a lot of mortar in between the bricks of this building. One thing is fastened to the other. I ask you today, fasten yourself to the church. Fasten yourself and build into the kingdom of God. Everywhere you go, find somebody to invite to the house of God. Everywhere you go, find somebody to share your testimony with because the day is coming and Jesus said it. He said the day is coming where fire will reveal what you've built. Fire will reveal whether you took the grace of God for granted or you said I'm going to invest in the kingdom. Amen. Paul ashamedly said some people build with hay and straw. Do you think hay and straw will survive in the fire that's getting ready to come? No, it will be burned up. If your life is not fastened in the church and fastened in the word and fastened in faith and, and you're not living a, a fastened life and you're not building something with your life upon the foundation that Jesus gave us, listen, it will be burned up. When temptation comes, when heartache comes, Amen. when plagues come, somebody told me this morning that they were a little concerned about a second wave of COVID, a stronger wave of COVID coming. And they're talking about it. Will the church survive? As for me and my house, Amen. we're fastened to the church. Amen. Amen. I believe in this thing. I believe in the foundation that Jesus laid. I believe that God put favor on my life so that I can... Build up the kingdom of God. Everywhere I go is an opportunity to pray with somebody. Everywhere I go, I have an opportunity to tell somebody about your testimony or my testimony. I'm building in this thing and I will not waste the grace of God. God gave me grace and supernatural favor. And even though I didn't deserve it, and I will not waste it. See, the Bible says... Let each one take care of how he builds upon it. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 through 14. And I'm almost through. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. The grace of God is available for everybody. Homosexual, drug addict, people who don't know what gender they are alcoholic, child abuser. The grace of God is for everybody. Amen. The grace of God is for children who are old enough to know the difference between sin and right and wrong. Some of us were saved at a very young age. The grace of God is for older folks who have lived their whole life, but yet at the end of their life they give their life to Jesus. The grace of God is for us and it's for all men. Teaching us. Listen, God's grace should teach you something. When God put His favor on your life, it's supposed to teach you. And Paul said, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly and righteously and godly. Where in this present world, in 2021, living as we should, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. When Christ comes back, what will you be able to show Him that you have done for the kingdom of God? When Christ comes back, will you say, Oh, wait a minute, Lord, I need more time to do something for you. No, don't waste God's grace. Do something for God today. Share your testimony with somebody. 
Bring somebody to the house of God and tell them if you'll give your life to God, your life will be forever changed. You'll never be the same. Amen. And then they can look for that blessed hope. Are we still tuning our ears into the sound of the trumpet? Or have we forgot that Jesus is coming? I haven't forgot it. I want the trumpet to sound. I've been praying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Heaven is my goal. And I want Him to come back and find a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. People that are excited to come and be part of a vibrant move of God. Listen, forget the building, forget the lights, forget the music. God is coming back for a people that are working in the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. And looking for Him. Jesus gave Himself that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto Himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. What does that mean? It means I've got to find something to do for God. I can't sit around with nothing to do for Jesus. He's the most important thing in my life and I've got to tell somebody about Jesus. Brother Don, I've got to find somebody that wants a Bible. I've got to find somebody that's lost and they don't know what it's like to know Jesus. I've got to share with them. Don't waste the grace God has given you. Do something for Christ. Put your heart and your talents into the church. It's the only thing that will save this world from the judgment to come. Amen. Now I know the devil will tell you that what you can do for the Lord doesn't really matter. But that's a lie. You have much to do in God's kingdom. Before you were ever born, God saw you and God chose you. Before you were ever born. He picked you out of all the people that would be birthed on this planet, Courtney, God saw you before you were ever born. He said, I, I want Courtney. But what about my mistakes? God still loves you. God still wants you. God still has a purpose for you. Amen. The best Christians I've ever been around were the best sinners before they come to Christ. The best Workers in the kingdom are the people who they don't necessarily have a degree or they don't necessarily haven't got it all figured out. They just show up and they're willing to do what it takes. As for me, I hope I can convey to you today, don't waste the grace God has given you. Give God your best. Give Him your all. Serve Him with all your heart, mind, and soul, as the scripture said. Amen. Pastor, are you getting ready to ask us to volunteer for things? That's not what this is about. People can volunteer for things out of duty, yeah. but if their heart's not in it, does it really matter? But if you've got your heart in the kingdom, and you're willing to say, God... I want to do something that will make a difference in my generation. That's what God wants. Could we stand today? Praise God. Hallelujah. I finished two minutes early. Good pastor. Hallelujah. Sister Lisa.